Howdy, everyone. We're back with episode two of Inked in Cincy. I'm your host, Liam White. I'm sitting here with uh, local tattoo artist, Eric Altonen. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? Good. Tell me a little bit about who you are and what you do. Um, I am local. I came from northern Michigan, but I lived here most of my life. Uh, I do what I want to do every day, which is like work with people and make artwork. So very fulfilling. I'm very happy. Uh, do you have any tattoos that you're particularly proud of? I think like a handful come to mind. Um, I think there's certain things that just personally as like obstacles or challenges that mm -hmm. I've overcome. I would say like large scale pieces or maybe something that took me outside of my comfort zone. There's a handful. So what's the longest session that you've had to that you had to do? Actually, um, there's a there's a client of mine that a couple of years ago, I worked on him for 12 hours straight and then he came back the next day and got four more hours on his sleeve. Mm -hmm. And he actually just like won that forged in fire show. He's like, a, wow, he's like a blacksmith yeah. of sorts. That's cool. Um, yeah, his name's Bill. He was really cool. That was like a cool experience, but yeah. I won't do it again. Yeah. That was like exhausting. Well, talk a little bit about uh, like the style that you work in, like why the style that you do work in is important to you. Yeah, um, I think there's like, there's a handful uh, or much like music, there's subgenres and different kinds of mm -hmm. styles you can go for. Um, and I kind of respect all of them being like more of a student of the craft. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's like different things that you get fulfillment out of depending on what kind of, what kind of person you're working with, mm -hmm. where it's going to go and what their tastes are. Um, I think if I'm you know, if I leave it too open ended, then I don't know. I, I don't know how to say it, but there's so many ways to do one thing and there's not necessarily one way to do it that makes me the happiest. Yeah. So. All right. We are going to cut to Casey on the street. He is going to talk to people about their time. Thanks, Liam. Let's go ask some people what they think about tattoos. If you could get any tattoo, what would you get and where? Uh, so I already got one. It's on my chest here, and um, it's a. It was found on a, on a mummy in the Siberian uh, wasteland. It's perfectly preserved. It was like a reindeer. Um, but I personally want um, some Skyrim tattoos. I grew up playing that game, and I love it. And I still have like fond memories, and I just want to ink my body to show that like it's a part of me. And also like. Um, my grandpa's like, you know, date uh, of birth and eventual death because that man means a lot to me. Uh, no, I do not, but I do want one. I want the Union Sorter Recovery symbol, but I want to draw it myself, so I haven't drawn it yet, but when I do, I will be getting it. I only have one tattoo, and it's an arrow, and it's like when life pulls you back or something, it's getting ready to shoot you forward, so just stay prepared. Um, I was actually thinking about this. I would definitely first get a calf tattoo, and it'd be from an anime called One Piece. So I'd definitely get a One Piece tattoo for sure. Yeah. So you think tattoos should be meaningful? Um, yeah, I do think they should be meaningful. Um, yes and no. It just, again, depends on the person. Like if you just want a tattoo for getting a tattoo, then go get a tattoo. And back to Liam in the studio. Eric, what's, uh, what's unique about the culture of tattooing to you? Uh, I think what's unique about it especially since like it's brought in a lot of people uh trying to express themselves and like live that that way um a lot of people have their different perspectives so like plurality is now a part of tattooing like it wasn't as much before the culture of tattooing comes out of like very like niche or like subsets of populations that mm -hmm. maybe were like considered oddballs or out there um not necessarily part of society um, so I think that's what attracted me to it is the history of it and where it comes out of. Um, as far as like the Western history of it goes, it's it's very much like seated outside yeah. of normal life. Are there any tattoos that you regret doing or any tattoos that you've had to refuse to do, like tell people now? Yeah, um, there's been some that I've regretted doing being hamstrung by the person asking for it, saying that that's what they want and they won't budge. and you know, maybe you let them convince you to do something or maybe you just like, 
maybe you could have passed it on to somebody else who that's their mm -hmm. main thing. Like that's what they do. They'd be happy to do it and yeah. you're not that happy to do it. Um, there's been a couple that I've refused to do. I rarely refuse to do tattoos just because I was taught differently than that. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's just not a good idea and yeah. it's permanent. So where do you get your inspiration from? Like for your for your art? I think a lot of my inspiration comes from um, maybe music or film or, um, you know, biology, um, different illustrative textbooks, like learning about things gives me inspiration to draw them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's not so much a direct art to art influence as it is like life uh, kind of influences what I think about and what I think about is what I draw. So it goes that way. Are there any other styles or artists that have inspired you? Yeah, I'd say like with tattooing, I've definitely been inspired by like uh, like very Western uh, traditional tattoos. Mm -hmm. I think that's been strong and bold and tried and true through the history of things. Uh, Jeff Zuck is one of my biggest influences uh, because, you know, he's just a really nice person. Uh, I'm from Michigan, so I think Michigan's like an important place for tattooing. Uh, it's been overlooked by a lot of people, yeah. but it's, it's become a very powerful outlet for yeah. good tattooing, good people. When it comes to traditional tattooing, so it's like a million people can have a clipper ship, a million people can have a rose or a swallow. So what makes it so unique that I can share this tattoo with a person that has something similar, but it's like completely different just based off of the artist we got it from? I think it's something that each artist does themselves to hone themselves into their own mind instead of like being so regurgitative of other influences. You kind of have to just draw a thousand of that clipper ship before you find out what in your brain makes it functional for you and fun mm -hmm. to do. Um, and it's nice when that lines up with somebody getting it, mm -hmm. enjoying that too. Yeah, I think that's when you get something that you talk about forever. You know? yeah. Is there any uh, differences in tattooing that you see from when you started to now? I start at the end of an era, um, the era of like physical reference, uh, people being there physically you know it, a lot of the world has changed in that aspect like zoom meeting calls weren't a thing mm -hmm. uh when i learned about tattooing or when, when i was getting tattooed at first mm -hmm. um so it's not just tattooing that's changed it's the whole world has kind of changed people want their stuff online amazon's primed them for lack of a better term to like expect things in a certain way a convenience and not really leave their house um, I think there used to be a lot more of a culture of people hanging out at the shop or yeah. like being around these areas. Foot traffic was what drove everything mm -hmm. uh, and word of mouth is what drove everything. Now you see it, kind of a sea change in how the internet has affected tattooing. For better or for worse, it's just different. Yeah. Speaking of foot traffic, let's take it back to KC on the street. Thanks, Liam. Let's go ask some more people about tattoos. Is there any tattoo that you don't think anybody should get? Uh, personally, I don't think it, uh, as, as long as it doesn't have cultural significance. So for instance, as a white guy, I don't think I should get like Maori tattoos of the Polynesian people because that has cultural significance to them. They, they, it has like, you know, they're like certain tattoos have uh, denote uh, like a chieftain status or, or just like a member of the tribe, you know, and like, it's just you should know where you're getting your tattoo from like because different cultures can have different aspects for instance like the in japan tattoos are rather taboo because they represent the yakuza which is essentially like the japanese mafia so you should just make sure you know what you're getting and where you're getting it from definitely if it's something like hateful um but if it's something just like you like and that's not harming anyone and it's just for you like you just enjoy it i think that that's a good tattoo. But yeah, if it's like hateful or offensive, then I would consider that bad. Uh, I don't think any tattoos are bad. A tattoo is bad. Uh, if the art isn't great, that can definitely be something that makes it not so good. Uh, if it doesn't really have that much meaning to the person, I don't think it's really a good tattoo in that case, or if it doesn't really express what they want it to. Uh, there are certain things that have very 
a like, significant cultural value and if you don't really understand the culture it's coming from, getting it just because it looks cool can be a little bit offensive. And that's all we have time for. Back to Liam in the studio. Welcome back everybody to Inked and Cincy. Thank you for joining us for episode two. Eric, tell us a little bit uh, about what you're doing. Uh, plug your socials. Where can people find you? Uh, I am tattooing right now in OTR at Crying Heart Tattoo. Uh, you can always come by or call the shop and say hello. Uh, my social media is just my name, Eric Altonen Tattoos. Stay in contact and yeah, come say hi. Cool. Thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, thank you.